Let us see if we're live today. Can anyone see us live? Okay, it says we're live now. Hi, beautiful beings. Happy Tremendous Tuesday. Oh, you're all in for a treat. I'm here for a treat. I'm going to pull up my phone. Can anybody that's tuning in with us live just drop a comment? Maybe a hashtag live. Want to make sure you can hear our audio, see us on the camera. We're going to get started. All right, Kim, let me just make this bigger. There we go. Yay! We are here today with a special guest, a good friend, a beautiful being. I have the honor and privilege with watching her business grow, Kim Connolly. And she works specifically with women in their 50s and 60s transitioning from high-end careers to the second half of their life. So we are just in for, oh, juiciness. If you know Kim or if you're new to Kim's world, just drop her some love. Really thank her for her time. She's really pouring into us today and we're going to have a juicy discussion. Cheryl's tuning in. Hi, Cheryl. We see you. So Kim, for those who don't know you, do you mind just giving us a brief introduction to who you are and how you came into midlife coaching? Yeah, sure. Hey, everyone. It's so it's so great to be here today um, with Tiffany. And I love talking about this because um, <clears throat> we don't talk about midlife enough. I started my journey, um, this journey, when I was 53 and my mom passed away. And like my world fell apart and I was going through menopause and there was just so much happening. My daughter was leaving. She was getting ready to go to college and I was lost. And so I just kept saying and telling myself and looking for what's next. There has to be next. There has to be more. And that's just kind of gotten me on this journey of working with other women because this is just, we need this. We need each other. We need to know that our life is not over with because our kids leave. We need to know yeah. that there's still so much more for us and that we are vital and we are beautiful and we are necessary and we need to be seen. So that's kind of how my journey started. Oh, Kim, I start tearing up when I hear that, right? Like transitioning, mom passing, daughter leaving, career ending, yeah, and, and there's a few people chiming in. Hi, Rebecca, we see you. Erica, we see you. Janice, hi, Jen. Yeah, and if anyone can relate to Kim's story, and, and even if you are not transitioning into retirement, but maybe you transition to be like a full-time mom, and that transition was hard, or even, you know, the empty nest syndrome with your kids leaving, um, let us know, just be seen in that because this is exactly what Kim coaches around and supports and mentors women through is like that transition of feeling like, oh, where's my purpose now that my kids are gone or my parents gone or my career is gone. And, and Kim, I'd love if we can focus on this for just a second, because I feel and we just talked about this women, we can build our identity through our parenting, through our career. And so I'm just curious, like, with the second half of life, how are you, hmm, how are you supporting women to reignite that purpose? What's that look like? Right. So, I mean, there's, um, you know, I have the three pillars that I, that I um, teach on. And the first thing we have to do in midlife is we have to go back. We have to remember who we were. We have to remember that little girl inside and what she wanted to do with her life and mm -hmm. who she wanted to become um, and reignite that flame, that mm -hmm. part of us because it's still there. Um, and we get lost in that and we forget. And so that's the first thing we have to do is just go back and remember Right. And then, and I really believe that through, once we get to midlife, we go through our life and we get to this age, this mm -hmm. stage, wondering like, what's next? Is this all there is? Like I've done all this stuff and now what? Mm -hmm. And did I do enough? That's mm -hmm. really the question. Did I do enough? 
I've done enough for everybody else, but what about me? Right. And so that's where that little girl piece yeah is so critical and that's really the i love i love working with that little girl because <sighs> she's within each one of us and she needs to be seen and she needs to be heard oh. yeah pillar number one little yeah. girl little yeah. girl princess. Mm, thank you for that kim and, and i'm just and i want to make sure i'm hearing you right it's it's kind of like we've checked off all the boxes success family mom all the things, learn how to cook, do all, we checked off all the damn boxes and it's like, oh, what about me? Right, exactly. And, you know, we women, we are good doers. We oh, do yeah. well, we achieve well, we climb that ladder of success, whatever that looks like, whether you have a career or you've just been a stay-at-home mom, right? Mm -hmm. There is still this level of achievement that we work hard to reach because number one we love it mm -hmm. most of the time not always but most of the mm -hmm. time and another big piece of that is we want to be seen we want people to recognize the good within us because maybe we can't quite see the good in ourselves mm -hmm. and so we look to other people for that validation right and so when we get to the kids leaving or considering uh, retirement or what are you gonna do now? That's where the whole, that's my, that's pillar number two is kind of the midlife unraveling and mm. how it all looks good on the outside, but inside you're just kind of dying. <laughs> like you just <laughs> are asking, yeah. you're asking those questions. Like, what did I do all this for? What did this all mean? Maybe, you know, I've 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 lost a lot of people, right? Yeah. My family, I've, I've like they're all gone, right? So those are relationships that I will never be able to number one get back, and number two, I will also never be able to heal the things in those relationships that I wished that we could have healed them, right? Yeah. And because I had my own life to live. I had my own stuff to do, right? We all do. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that unraveling, uh, <clears throat> I love Brene Brown and uh, she talks about this a lot. You know, Brene Brown talks about shame. She yeah. talks about worthiness a lot. And as we've been going through our life, we look to other people, as I just said, to tell us how worthy we are, how good we are, how well we are doing. But when all of that stops, right, and things start kind of tumbling down and you're standing at this door, I liken it, this is a new thing for me, I liken it to a door, right? And you, the door to the second half of your life is what yeah. this is all about now, right? Some of us are afraid to open the door. Some yeah. of us are like peeking in, but we're closing it. I was like, yeah, I'm not going there yet, right? Yeah. And um, And then of course, you throw in menopause to the whole mix, you know, that's just the whole added level of craziness. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah. things are happening to our body that we didn't, we couldn't, we didn't see it coming. Like nobody told us we're not prepared for any of this. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that's kind of the falling apart that can happen at midlife or the unraveling that, is also something that Brene Brown talks about is how it just seems to all start coming apart. Right. Um, yeah. Like the, the breakdown before the breakthrough. Yeah, exactly. And the only way to break through, which is the third pillar, which is kind of the biggest pillar, yeah. is the happiness pillar. Like, what does that mean for you? Right. What does happiness look like for you? What does fulfillment look like for you now? Because it changes. Like your kids are grown, right? Your 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 family as the reality is as you get older, more people are going to die, right? People maybe that you've always relied on. So who do you rely on when there isn't anybody else left? Right? And you have to just like look at yourself in the mirror. 
right? And not get the happiness and validation through outside sources yeah. and find it within. And you talked about that in pillar one, like reignite that love and that purpose. And just one sec, Kim, it says our camera's out. Can you guys hear us and see us? Will you guys just comment? Um, hold on, Kim. I want to make sure everyone can hear us. Cheryl, we also start to deal with aging. Yeah. Career here. Okay. Can you guys just confirm you can hear us and see us? I'm just going to comment and see. Hi. Huh. Well, I'm going to assume they can hear us. I hope they can because I'm here on Zoom, Kim. Let me just make sure I'm over here. Well, I'm going to assume we are on. If not, I'm going to record it just in case. Okay. Yeah, and I really want to dig deeper, Kim, if we can, into the happiness piece. Um, and lucky for you, I was just with my mom this morning. You know, she took me to the doctors and uh, we grabbed lunch and she asked, she's like, oh, I saw like midlife and, and menopause. You're interviewing someone. I think that's such a great topic. And, you know, my mom's kind of coming to this part in her life where she's been cleaning houses her whole life. She's a former nurse, so she does a lot of home health aid stuff. And she's like, I just feel like I've been servicing everybody else. And she's like, you're saying she's in this unraveling. She's trying to find purpose. And she's like, really want to work with like battered women. I want to work with women in this way. Like Tiff, can I even do it? And I'm like, that's a great question, mom. I, I don't know. You've got to find it within. And if you could, Kim, and, and anybody else, if you all can hear us and see us, like, I'd love to know, like, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a little girl? Me personally? Yeah. It, it, yeah. You, Kim, and, and anybody here, like, I want to talk about that for a second, because it might not look that way, but we might be on the path. Yeah. So Kim, tell us, what was your little girl dream? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, what didn't I want to do? <laughs> what didn't I want to be, right? I wanted to travel. I wanted to, uh, my dad was a, my dad was a business owner and an entrepreneur. And so of course I wanted to follow in his footsteps and wanted to own a restaurant. I wanted to be a vet because I loved animals. I mean, which, what kid doesn't like animals? I wanted like three dogs and two cats. And, you know, at the time I didn't even, think really about marriage and kids it was about me and what I wanted right um and so it's interesting you know one of the questions I ask is who did you want to be when you believed you could be anything you wanted before people started telling you no before people said your girls don't do that right or you're too loud or yeah. you know yeah. Go change your pants because I don't like those on you. And, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And so we start getting dimmed down, right? Brene it's, Brown talks about this too. Yep. Yes. Yes. And throughout our life is just a continuous hiding. We start to hide because there's something about us that is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, as a kid, before that happens, anything is possible. And you believe that anything is possible and you act and live your life every single day as if everything is possible because it is. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you're so right, Kim, because it, and even though I, I'm, I'm 32, I'm not hitting the menopause or retirement, but I felt like I had a transition through like corporate career to coaching and I, and I can relate to so much to like the pain and the shame. And like when I was a young girl, I wanted to be like a famous Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. And like, I really believed I could do it, but you're so right. My teachers were like, that's unobtainable. You're not good enough. I'm like, bro, I'm eight. How do we know I'm not good enough? Like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Yeah, exactly. Yes. You, you know, and, and you're so right. And even throughout like college, I remember them telling us like the statistics of people opening up their business and we get it here. Um, like Erica saying she always wanted to help people and be a doctor, like, 
And you're doing that right now, Erica, with your products and such, like, even though it might not be in the realm that's happening and same with you, Kim, like we're, we're close when we reignite that flame and anywhere where I was going with that was like, I'm so conditioned, Kim, and I'm only 32. I'm so conditioned that I don't even think I could honestly answer it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So can you talk yeah. a little bit about like how you're helping women with that unraveling, like how many layers we have to get off there and how many anger, menopause, hot flashes do we have to go through until we're like, oh, there I am. Can you explain? Right. That? Yeah, exactly. And it's um, <clears throat> like, that's the work. That is the work to do at this, at this stage to really be able to move forward. And so many women get stuck here because mm -hmm. they, they're, they're lost. Yeah. Right. And so this unraveling, as Brene Brown says, I I liken it to you really have to unravel the thoughts that you have created about yourself. You have to unravel and just peel away oh, all yeah. of that stuff, all of the conditions that you have lived under, you know. Um, and so that's really the work is to do that unraveling. And yet I will say that because like that's the hard work and women I'm just gonna say are just so they're looking for the easier softer way I did too for years yeah. right and there are there are so many advertisers on Facebook magazines TVs you know they're pushing pills they're pushing ointments and creams and fasting and all of this stuff right like if you just lose those 30 pounds that you gained in men during menopause you're going to be fine right mm -hmm. take this pill it's going to give you more energy because at, in menopause you just become like you're tired right and it's not you're not tired because of menopause you're tired because you've you've been living this life of you know quiet desperation right like not listening to that little girl inside of you yeah and so we buy these things and to make it all go away but it doesn't go away because that's the work that we have to do and in order to walk through that door to your second half yeah you gotta do this work or you're gonna be looking back all the time at where you came from and wondering why you can't go back there. Mm -hmm. This pill says I can go back there, right? I'm going to buy this cream. It'll make all these wrinkles go away. All the sagging that I have is going to make it all go away and everything pretty again. That's the lie that we buy because it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> so anyway, you know, that's just a little tangent there, but yeah. <laughs> so the work is, the work is this work to figure out the things about yourself that yeah. you've been so busy to too bit yeah too busy to to take care of yourself i love that kim and like i got goosebumps and i had to redo the chat because i don't know it keeps freezing cheryl says i wanted to be a rock star performer that's what you're doing with church babe mm. <laughs> maybe like a, you know a worship rock star <laughs> a movie star show actress yeah yeah Cheryl I love that and Erica says doctor Olympic athlete and it's like I really want to take this one step further with you Kim because I I really want to empower everybody here if there's anything you get from Kim's message she guides women through the inner work not the pill not the diet not the wrinkle cream because it's lies we're buying and Kim, knowing you like I know you and I know how profound your work is, I don't want to say this and harm anyone or hurt anyone's feelings, but I guess my question to you is, how do women start believing in this work, right? Like a woman who's in her 50s, right? Let's just use 50 because it's a an even number. She's used to the pills and the 30-day fast. Like she's been doing it for all these years. Does she get fed up? Is she like... After this, none of it works. Like, 
when women come to you, are they kind of at that stage or at their breaking point? Like I'm fed up. I don't want to lose another 30 pounds because I'm still miserable when I'm 30 pounds underweight and da, da, da. like, can you explain a little bit about like where that gets women when they continue on these lie journeys, these lie pills and such? Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they so they have bought into this lie and they've been feeding it for years. Right. And something happens. Yep. Right, something happens. There is always a catalyst to this work for mm -hmm. a woman in midlife. For me, it was when my mom died, and well, when my uh, daughter, uh, another level was when my daughter and you know, she went out of state to college. She's now living in freaking Florida, right? My only daughter is living in Florida, nineteen hours away. So, I mean, there was some work that I had to do around that, right? So. Uh -huh. <clears throat> There's always some catalyst. It doesn't have to be a huge yeah. loss of somebody dying. It can just be looking in the mirror one day and you see there's no life in your eyes, right? You've been trying and trying and trying yeah. and you just have this moment of clarity. It just really comes down to your moment of clarity, whatever that is. And it's different for everyone, but yeah. it happens. It absolutely yeah. comes. Yeah. Yeah. I, the catalyst, the breakthrough. Yeah, Kim, and, and I love that. And, and not to hurt anyone's feelings, like I have bought the lies too. I bought the diet pills and the, you know, the cream to get rid of the bags. And I still worked a hundred hours a week. Like we, we've all, it's hard to not buy into it because they, they're, they make these really cool promises. It's like in 30 days, you'll look 30 years younger. And it's like, but I'm just run for me. I found the same thing. I was just running from the real work I needed to do for myself. And, you know, when you're at that transition where you're letting go of the career and your menstrual cycle, like there's that big catalyst for, well, now I can't get validation outside of myself. I really got to look inside myself. And I think that's such a beautiful way you put that. It's, it's the inner, the catalyst to do the inner work. Yeah. And, you know, let me just say, there's nothing wrong with any of those products. There's nothing wrong with any of it, but it all comes down to why you are using it. Why are you buying it? What do you hope it's going to do? Mm -hmm. And there are, I use eye cream every single day. I love it. I've been using eye cream since, you know, whenever, um, does it work? I don't know. It makes me feel better. Right. You yeah. know, I, mean, I take vitamins like I do all of those things, but it really comes down with what is your intention? You know, what, what is your motive behind it? And yeah. for a lot of women, not everyone, but for a lot, the motive is because they're not good enough. And this is going to make me look better. This mm -hmm. is going to make me feel better so that I can be better so people yeah. will love me more so yeah. people will see me and appreciate me and that's that's really what it all comes down to right mm -hmm. I've got I use my moisturizer like I have stuff that I use right I have protein shakes I have all that stuff but it's really about where you're coming from in here that's really what it's what it's all about yeah mm -hmm. Mm, this made me feel so good. Oh, mm -hmm. and so Kim, I, I know you have a really big event coming up and really you're going to dive extremely deep. Anyone that registers, and I really recommend anyone that's here live or on the replay register for Kim's event. Kim, what can women expect when they participate in your second half success sessions? Tell us more. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, it's really going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about how you individually, because all of us are different, how you build this blueprint for the next part of your life. And a blueprint is a design, right? I liken it to a house. A house starts with a design process mm -hmm. before anything else happens inside. And so we're going to start at the ground floor of this second half of our life because when you open that door, we've not, we haven't been there before. We don't know what's going to be. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that looks like. 
we get mm -hmm. to decide what that looks like. And so mm -hmm. this session is really going to be deciding and walking through this process of helping you get a better vision for your second half and yeah. the blueprint that you yourself want to put together and create with yeah. you know and then the steps to make it happen yeah right I, that's that's the work it doesn't just happen by itself mm, i agree i'm an ad i'm an advocate for the inner work i was I did everything else on the outside and found misery. I was like an outside valid. Yes. Hashtag inner work. Like, yes. And Kim, when is the, when is this, uh, the sessions when? Yeah, it's uh, March 13th, March 13th. 1 PM to two, just for an hour Eastern time. Ooh. Um, yeah. And I think also that there's something powerful when midlife women come together to do this work. Because a lot of us feel alone in this. We feel like we're the only ones who have gone through this and feel like this. And we really need to know that we're not alone and we're not like crazy for feeling the way that we do. It's so normal to come to this, you know, to become 50 and feel like, oh my God, <laughs> the best of my life is over. Right. I mean, it's not true. It's not. You're not mental, you're menopausal. And that's what we're right. talking about. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Where's the registration link, Kim? If anybody here is feeling they want to be surrounded by midlife women, really have this discussion, really do that inside work alongside with your guidance and mentorship, where can they find the link to register? And it's a free registration, by the way, y'all. Oh, yeah, it's totally free. Um, I'll put the link in the comments on Facebook. Um, so that everybody can see it there and yeah, register and download the um, the second half success workbook that you'll get. Um, and I also have a free training, a video training called the three pillars um, of mastering midlife, you know, which talks about this a little bit more and gives a little bit of my story. Um, so yeah, it's going to be great. I would encourage, and you know, you don't have to be 50 to come. Like yes. if you're 30, like start this work now, right? Yes. Don't wait till you're 50. Imagine, oh my gosh, imagine where I would be now if I had started this work 20 years ago, yeah. right? That's, it's, it's, it's fabulous. Yeah. I, did I ever tell you about my coach Vos? She's 75 and she looks 45. Did I ever tell you what she said to me? No. She and y'all, this is a writer downer. This is not my saying. This is Bose. She's 75. She lives in Brooklyn, wears like bright red lips, got short, dyes her hair blonde. She's like a hot shit shit. She says, You know why menopause was a breeze for me? Because I didn't run from the work. I did the work. Menopause was a breeze. Yes. I like get an ice cream at the local ice cream joint. It was a breeze because I didn't avoid feeling my feelings. And I was like, yeah, this was it, you know, years when I started my self-development journey when I was 25. I was like, I can look and sound like her at 70. Wow. I'm on the right journey. So shout yeah. out Boj. If anybody knows Boj, you know her. Like you know her. And she always said, menopause was a breeze for me because I didn't avoid feeling my feelings. Yes, 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 yes. So good. So good. So good. And I'm like, yeah. So hashtag inner work. Y'all, if you have questions, I know we're having some issues. I did record this session. Drop them in the comments and Kim will come back and answer them. Um, and again, you don't have to be a midlife or me premenopausal woman. Just anything that resonated or spoke to you today, please share your takeaways in the comments. And if you have any questions for Kim, Please drop them in the comments. She's going to come right in in a few minutes. Drop her free event she has going on on March 13th. March 13th. Yes. March 13th, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Definitely. I highly recommend being there. I'll be there. This is going to be a really potent event. And Kim is just magical in how she discussed these three pillars. This was just a little, a little dusting, a little sugar dusting. <laughs> but um. Thank you, Kim, so much for being here. And y'all give Kim so much gratitude and thanks for being here. This is not easy to go live in front of strangers and be pinned some questions. So thank her for her time. And Kim, is there anything you want to leave us with before we end our, our session today? 
Um, I just want to say thank you for letting me be here, asking me to be here for everyone who is here. And yeah, the inner work is the work. It's worthy work. And so don't, don't be afraid. Jump in. It's good. It's good work. Yeah. Jump in. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you all for being here. We'll chat with you in the comments in just a few seconds. Thank you for your patience on the audio and and visuals. We'll be here next week. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. Bye.